Mayan Mountains to all the Mesilla Valley, reaching all of New Mexico. Broadcasting live from the Las Cruces studios, bringing you the issues that matter and the topics that count. Telling it like it is, it's the Mike Teus Show. And now here's your host, Mike Teus. Thank you for joining us today with the Mike Tez Show. My name is Mike Tez. We are coming from the beautiful downtown Las Cruces Channel Studios. And today we've got a few things we're going to talk about. Before we get into our topic, which is, is panhandling legal, whether we like it or not, they are coming back. You know, there is nothing I hated more than wearing these things. You know, they made them in different sizes, different colors. My daughter made this one for me. And you know, whether we like it or not, these masks are coming back. I'm telling you, no matter how much we hate them, bellyache about them, they're on their way back. I'm gonna tell you a simple solution, something we need to consider. You know, the vaccine, I was not a big fan of the vaccine, but you know what, I got it. You know, when I was a, a kid in elementary school, I definitely was not a fan of the smallpox shot, but I had to get it. I was not a fan of the polio shot, but I got it. You know what? I don't like them. And I'm going to tell you what, I still got a sore arm from my first vac uh, shot. It, I hate it. I mean, I've lost, you know, my arm just has not felt the same sense, but... That new variant of COVID-19, that Delta, it is hitting. You know what? I used to think, yeah, right, that ain't happening. Well, you know, my, at the office that my daughter works at, she's a lawyer. On Friday, one of the staff members, a clerk, got tested positive for uh, the new variant. And she got, you know, started showing symptoms, tested positive. By Sunday, six out of nine of the staff in that office got sick. You know what? I tell you what, get the shot. You know, we got the smallpox shot. We survived it. We got the booster shot. We survived it. Check with your doctor. If you're healthy enough to get that shot, get that shot. Let's do it. Get the shot. Be done with it. I'm going to tell you what. This should be something we never quit using. Never. Continue to use sanitizer. Continue to wash your hands. These little things have become a household staple everywhere. We need to continue. We need to be vigilant and we need to stay on the sanitizing. We need to stay on keeping our hands. You know what? Keeping your hands clean is a good idea anyway. Whether it's COVID-19, no matter what it is, you need to wash your hands. You need to sanitize them. But you know what? These are coming back. We need to understand, you know, we can protest them. I see people protesting these dumb things I can't stand. I see them protesting. They can't stand those things. I can't stand them either. But like it or not, they're on their way back in. Now, I'm going to tell you, I see a time, you know, I see a time that our city will be the first city vaccinated. You know, I was talking to the mayor and we were saying, he was saying, you know what? I envision a time when this city is completely inoculated, completely vaccinated. He told me I couldn't stand the way it destroyed our economy, the way it shut things down. My goodness, we need to get vaccinated. And I am not a vaxxer. I'm an anti-vaxxer who said I'm getting vaccinated. I got vaccinated for smallpox, polio, the flu shot. I get those vaccinations. But you know what? I got it. I'm still here. I didn't die from it. Uh, you know, my arm is sore. I should have never picked my right arm. I should have said my left arm. But, you know, I got the shot. I got the shot because you know what? I take care of my brother. I'm his caretaker. I take care of him. And, you know, I got to think of other people. I had that attitude, well, if I get it, I'm, it's my time. Well, you know what? If I were isolated and all by myself and the only person I was putting in harm's way was myself, that would be a good attitude to have. And I could have it. But the simple fact that I 
and am in contact with a lot of people on a regular basis. I got that shot not as much for me as it was for them. I need to think of other people. I have a high immune system. I take a bunch of vitamin D. I take 5,000. I was talking to Chris. He takes 8,000 of vitamin D. I'm moving up to 8,000. You know what? Vitamin D is one of the things that help you. That shot is one of the things that help you. You know, we just got to do our part. And if not for us, let's do it for everyone around us. Let's do it for our loved ones. Let's do it for people we come in contact with. And you know what? We, we need to set the right example. We got kids that are watching us. We need to set the right example. We need to talk to our kids and say, you know what? When we were kids, when we were your age, we had to get a smallpox shot. We hated it. You know, I'd like to know if there's one person anywhere. Please contact me if you liked getting that smallpox shot. Anyone, please tell me. Contact me. I'd like to interview someone who enjoyed the smallpox shot when they were kids, the booster shot when they were kids. Somebody, tell me. We couldn't stand. I dreaded it. I was so stressed out standing in that line to get those shots. I almost fainted. I couldn't stand it. But you know what? I got it. And I didn't get smallpox. And you know what? Irregardless if it was the shot or not, I still didn't get it. But you know what? We were told we need to get it. We got it. And I'm urging you all, we need to get that shot. We need to get vaccinated. And if you absolutely, positively are not going to get vaccinated, wear a mask just for protection of others. Wear a mask. Sanitize your hands all the time. You know what? I know guys that wear these all the time. A couple of my friends, they always have these masks on. Wear them. If you don't want to wear those masks, you know, protect those you come in contact with. If you go to work, Protect your fellow employees. Well, whatever your job in life is, think of the people around you. Think of the people you ride with on the bus if you take the bus. Some people aren't blessed with a good immune system like a lot of us have. So we need to think of them. We need to think of the people who have a low immune system and absolutely get sick, catch every bug there is. And you know what? Every single one of us knows somebody like that. We all know somebody in our family that catches every bug that comes around every year. They get the flu every year. Those are the people we need to think about. We need to think about them. Whether it's grandma, no matter who it is, we need to think of the people around us. Enough of all that mask stuff. I don't like it. I can't stand it. I still sanitize. In fact, I have one of these in my car. I hate all that, but I do it. And I do it on a regular basis because you know what? It's the right thing to do. And it just shows people that I care about their health and their safety. So you don't want get the shot. And you don't want you get 100 bucks right now. I feel so cheated because I got the shot and no $100. You at least get $100. And you can use it on whatever you want, whether it's a gift card, visa card. I don't care what it is. 100 bucks is 100 bucks. Plus, you register for that big grand money they're giving away. Someone from Las Cruces won $250,000 in that giveaway there. So hopefully they'll go donate to the Dream Center. Now, to the we've talked about some of the important part. Now let's talk a little bit about panhandling in Las Cruces. You know, no matter what, I haven't met anyone that thinks that's a good idea. I've not met anyone that thinks that's okay. It, you know, I see these people in the medians. I see people on the shoulders. A lot of you all may re remember when the firemen held up the boots and would walk through the intersections and ask for money, boots. They'd hold up their boots and would throw donations in it. I don't remember what it was for, but they would collect money once a year they'd have a fundraiser where they collected money in their boots. Then that, uh, they made that particular form of soliciting illegal in Las Cruces. For the longest time, we didn't see a soul out in the streets holding up a sign. We, 
We lost the firemen who, man, they're pretty legit guys walking around with the boots and collecting. Those guys disappeared for the longest time. And then what happens? Well, I'm told, and I am, get, I am uh, putting in a request for it, the ACLU threatened us and Masia and several other cities based on a law, it's the Gilbert uh, rule in Arizona where they, they said you cannot ban it. Now, it went, our city council in 2018, they brought up that ruling and uh, the city attorney said that we're going to have to look into it. There's things that we need to uh, research and uh, we need to <clears throat> obviously repeal it because everyone's back in the streets again. But they said we need to see what the outcome of this is. That was 2018. Three years later, three years later, that's passed. And we still have not gotten an answer as to what's going to happen. We all know what the outcome was, but uh, we don't know what the answers are. Uh, the city attorney, Vega Brown, that's who the city attorney was. She's the one who uh, said that uh, we need to look into it before we start uh, getting on people for panhandling. And one of our city council members in uh, that district, it was the El Paseo district, he said it's unfair to cite people for begging in the middle of the street because they're poor people and they don't have no money. And if they go to jail for panhandling, it's not fair. They'll start a riot and they'll cause all kinds of problems if we start picking on these poor people that are begging. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If we don't want to go to jail, if we don't want a ticket, we drive the speed limit. We stop at stop signs. We stop at stoplights. You know what? Most of us don't have money to pay fines and go to jail either. But you know what the fact of life is? Rules are in place for a reason. The panhandling rule, it wasn't because we hated people raising money like those firemen did once a year. It's because it was a safety issue. It was a safety, I mean, we already have a problem with people getting run over in this city. We have people allowed to stand in the center of our streets holding a sign up. Like I said a week ago, I, I saw one guy laying down in the median. He wasn't even standing up holding a sign. He was lying down with a sign leaning against him. That's a safety hazard. Another Elks in Maine. I saw a man with no shirt shaved, crazy looking guy jumping and dancing around in that median. I noticed nobody was going in that median to turn. I wouldn't. I'm going to tell you, when we come back, we're going to talk about, you know, areas, towns, villages that still enforce that rule. When we return to the Mike Tez Show, my name is Mike Tez. Hi folks, I'm Dave Gallus. This is your 3A Research Minute. We're here with CEO Michael Raucci of 3A Research here in Las Cruces. Michael, could you tell me the procedure of a trial? Sure, Dave. A participant will come to our office to see if they qualify for a study. Once they qualify for a study, they will be asked to do evaluations throughout the course of a three-month period or longer, and they'll come in periodically to see their progress and make sure they're safe and they're okay. Michael, could you tell us the location here in Las Cruces? Where is that? We are located in the heart of Las Cruces, 530 North Telshore Boulevard, Suite B. We have two locations, El Paso, and we've done so well, we had to extend ourselves here to this great community. So far, Las Cruces has been very responsive, and we love Las Cruces, so we're excited to be here. Thanks, Michael. I hope the folks take advantage of this opportunity. That's been your 3A Research Minute here in Las Cruces. See you next time.
If your loved one has passed away due to COVID-19, pay close attention to this message. You could be entitled to a death benefit of over $300,000. The U.S. government has set up a fund to pay families relief if they've lost a loved one due to COVID-19. The compensation includes a death benefit and lost wages benefit. Time is limited, so we urge you to make a free phone call right now. There's no cost to you for this claim. That's 866-372-3669. Hi, I'm Ray Bamberg with Here on Earth. I would like to invite you for a free hearing evaluation to our office. We've been here in southern New Mexico for 34 years helping people hear better. from rashes, dryness, flakiness, and thickness to the skin? 3A Research is conducting a trial of an investigational drug on plaque psoriasis. Subjects must be 18 years of age or older. This is an eight-week study. We will compensate you for your time and travel up to $225. Enrolling participants now in Las Cruces. Contact our office at 575-288-1646 or visit our Facebook page at 3A Research or our website 3asites.com. We're back with the Mike Tez Show. My name is Mike Tez. We're talking about panhandling in Las Cruces. You know, I drove to Masia, who also received the same letter from the ACLU with their big threats. You will not see panhandlers in Masia. I didn't see, I've not seen any of them. I've not seen no signs held up. You know what else I ain't seen? I ain't seen nobody camping out in the plaza. I ain't seen people hanging out around the businesses in the plaza. I've seen no signs held up around the plaza area. I haven't seen no signs hung up on Avenida de Messia. You know why? Because they're not going to back down at the co- and jeopardize their community. You know what? They're taking care of business in Messia. Uh, you know what? I got to respect the fact that they do not tolerate a lot of that stuff. You know, they don't. Go over there and look. Go look, go pull into a business and see how many people approach a window asking for money or asking for help. You know what? We need to stand up and we need to get tough about this. We need to ask these questions. The city attorney, we need to ask, what have you found out about the panhandling issue. We never heard back. You've had three years to research it. That's more than enough time. They're, you know, they wanted to give it six months to a year to see what happens when they, I guess, eased up on it. We saw what happened. Here in the old Las Cruces, of course, you're not going to see that in new Las Cruces because that does not count with new Las Cruces. I haven't been approached at Pickwick or any of the places in the new Las Cruces. Haven't seen anyone holding up signs. I'm going to tell you something. If I were a panhandler, if I really wanted to raise money and wanted to get people to donate, I would not be on El Paseo in Maine. You know where I'd be? I'd be on Sonoma Ranch over there. I'd be right there by that Walmart where you got a higher traffic count. You got people with uh, income. You know what? That's where I'd be. I'd be holding my sign up where there's people that have a little bit more money than the people downtown. So, you know, that's what I do. But I'm going to bet you something. I bet you you go hold that sign up. I bet you're not going to last five minutes out there. You won't last. Do it. You know what I might do? I might go out there and hold a sign up myself and see how long I last. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go hold up a sign on Sonoma, by the Walmart, and those different places. And you know what? I'm going to see how long I last. And then you know what I'm going to do? We see tents being pitched all over in Old Las Cruces. I'm going to tell you what, if I was homeless, I wouldn't be pitching my tent in that desert area there. They got a beautiful park on Roadrunner. Oh, my goodness, pitch it right there with trees and grass. That's where I'd pitch my tent. 
Man, if I were homeless, you don't want... I see these neighborhood parks that have those water fountains that shoot up, the water thing. Oh, man, you know what? That's where I'd go. Because not only do I have a place to sleep and a place to live, I get a shower right there whenever I want it with that water that shoots up every few seconds. So you got a shower right there. you got bathrooms right there. That's where I'd go pitch it. I wouldn't come over here to the old Las Cruces and on some of these uh, streets. No. I'd go where the, where the amenities are better. Go over there, sleep in the nice shaded park. Go take a shower in that water fountain that shoots up. Get a shower. Nice place under a tree with plenty of grass. That's where I'd go. Then I'd go hold my sign up right out of the right at Walmart, right there where people are going out. And get away. And you know what? I'd give them time to where they're stopping before they turn so that they don't cause an uh, accident. I'd stand right there and hold my sign. Uh, please donate. You know what? I'm going to do that. And I'm going to let you know how long I last. I'm, I'm going to have someone film me out there doing it. And I'm going to see how long I last panhandling and the new Las Cruces. Oh, it's beautiful out there. Nice streets, walking paths, bike paths. There's everything. It's a beautiful place to live. I'm telling you, I, yeah, I'm almost tempted. I don't want to live out there. But you know what? I'm from old Las Cruces. I got the Dream Center in old Las Cruces, not new Las Cruces, old Las Cruces. Our boxing gym with all our champion boxers in there, boxing every day. We're in the old Las Cruces. We love old Las Cruces. But you know what? We want our city government to love us as much as we love our city. That's what we're asking. What do we want from council people? What do we want from our state representatives? They promise us the moon when they're running for office. I'm telling you, they will do anything. They'll promise you the moon. They'll even do your laundry probably if you vote for them. You vote for me and I'll take you to the store. You vote for me, I'll clean your house. They'll do anything till they're elected. Once they're elected, we don't need, we forget their name because we never see them again. But hey, we're going to start seeing them here pretty soon because election time's coming soon. So get ready because they're going to be out there promising you the world, promising to do your laundry, promising you anything you want if you just vote for me. And you know one of their secrets are? They'll call you by your first name with a term of endearment. How are you doing? I love you. How have you been? I'm so glad to see you. They will love you to death here. It's coming soon. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Coming up soon, they're having right now meetings to discuss, guess what? Some of the issues in our city. The crime. Oh, my goodness. Someone got killed at a party a couple nights back. A shooting downtown. You know what? There is no shortage of town in our city. The crime is crazy right now. They'll say, well, it's not as... You know what? We are ranked nationally for high crime. Uh, crime, brazen theft. You know what? The crime is crazy. Of course, if you get caught, you're going to get bounced out of jail. If you go to jail, you'll stay there for a brief while, then they'll release you on your own recon. You know what? You go to jail, get out. Now, you know what? I wish I could sit here and blame the judges. It's not their fault. We can't blame the judges. We cannot blame the policemen. The policemen do their job. The judges do their job. We voted for this silly bill in 2016 to get that bond because the poor people could not afford bail, and it wasn't fair to people who were poor. There we go again, the poor people who cannot afford to bail themselves out of jail for shooting somebody. We can't afford to bail themselves out for beating someone up, for breaking the law. They can't afford to bail themselves out. So poor people, we cannot, we are discriminating against the poor people. I'm going to tell you something. I am at the lowest part of middle class that you know what? I'm this far from the poor class where all the benefits are. I'm just about to the point right there. One more click down and I'd get two, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars a month for food, uh, food assistance. I'd get uh, income support. I'd get the money. But you know what? I'm too close. I'm too far above it. 
I work a little too much. I make a little too much to qualify to be taken care of. You know what? We have a lot to offer people who are poor and in trouble. One thing, you can go to Community Hope, Casa Pellegrinos. They'll put two giant basketfuls of food in your car once a month if you go down there and you need food. In this city, if you're hungry, it's because you're lazy. Because there are so many places to get food in this town. At uh, the church right across from Walmart on Valley, they give food every single Wednesday morning. They're giving you food boxes. And they're good food boxes. A gallon of milk, cereal, meat in there sometimes. It's good food. They're get, every Wednesday, they're blessing people with food there. Community Hope, they bless people on a continuous basis with food. So we can't say they're hungry. You need clothes? Go to the mission. Go to Community of Hope. They'll get you clothes. You need a shower? Go over there and they'll tell you. Now, if you just plain old don't want to do anything, you lay around the streets, collect money from people who feel sorry for you, that seems to be what's going on right now. You know, <clears throat> I'm not a naysayer. I'm not saying all this because I'm negative. I'm saying this because I love our city. I love the old Las Cruces. I love our city. I want to see our city prosper. I want to see jobs come into our city. I want to see it grow. I want to see people with degrees getting jobs right here instead of leaving. That's what I want. I want to see a vibrant Las Cruces. I want to see people have a reason to stay here. I don't want to see it decline like it is right this minute. It's in decline. we got a lot of good businesses out there. And you know what? In fact, one of the businesses, I want to thank Daisy at City Barber. She did this awesome haircut for me. She was friendly. She was nice. She did a great, she did a good job. Now I'm telling the people at City Barber, you need to go, go see them. They're here in the old Las Cruces, right on Main Street. City Barber. There's Zach. There's Steve. There's Daisy. I'm going to tell you, they're friendly. They're Cubs fan. That's the only side I, that I disagree with. But I love them anyway. They do good work. And I'm going to tell you something. They believe in the old Las Cruces just like I do. And they believe that we can prosper if we all get together and do our part. Thank you very much for joining me today with the Mike Tess Show. Join me next week because we're going to talk about these town hall meetings that they're having on crime. If you want to join on one of them, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be at the, at the Home Builders Association Event Hall, 2825 North Main. And they will discuss some of the problems at 6 p.m. Tuesday. I urge you to go. They're going to be talking about the issues I'm talking about now. Crime, homelessness. Hey, you know what? We're going to have some of our representatives there that love us every two and four years. They love us. Well, you know what? Let's tell them. Show your love now. Show me your love. Thank you for joining us with the Mike Taylor Show. My name is Mike Taylor.